else. Your headliner is so fucking good. Um, I've known him for a long time. Uh, he's traveled the world doing stand-up comedy. He's uh, he's terrific, and he's uh, Yuck Yuck's finest thing going. Um, you guys, and uh, let's see what else about him. For sure, you've seen him on TV and uh, movies. He's big. He's an actor as well, and uh, he's here for you right now. Please put it together. Huge for Mr. Wayne Fleming. Sean Tweedley, still in the building. Show him your love, gang. <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm not from Toronto. I, I'm a little pissed off at the cops here because I got stopped tonight. And, uh, so if there's any cops in the audience, fuck you. It's your attitude I don't like, you know? Well, I was at a donut shop. I don't want to mention the name of the place because they might sue me, but a uh, guy used to be a hockey player. <laughs> Eddie Shacks, you know what I'm talking about, eh? And and all I did was I come out of the parking lot. There's a stop sign. Well, I didn't see it, so that's why he stopped me from rolling the stop sign because I'm such a vicious criminal. And uh, so he had an attitude like Jack Nicholson. I'll share it with you. And I don't like attitudes, right? So when he stops me, I go, "What's your fucking problem?" <laughs> Okay, it didn't go down exactly like that. The truth be known, it was more like, Sir Problem Officer, I'm really stoned and I can't deal with you right now. <laughs> <clears throat> this is what he said. <sighs> the problem. Just a minor infraction, you little prick. <clears throat> a little thing called a stop sign. Didn't exactly stop for it now, did we? Kind of slowed down a tad. <clears throat> well, to me, slow down, stop, same damn thing. Oh, really? Well, let me create a little scenario for you. I got a golf club in my hand. I'm whacking you over the head with it. You want me to slow down or to stop? <laughs> it's so cool to be somebody else for a minute, huh? Uh, I'll be right with you. It's a small fantasy. Just hang in there. Right? <laughs> the actor Michael Caine. <clears throat> I don't like you. I never did. It's a quick impression of Michael Caine. No, 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 no. If I don't get applause, I don't accept charity. And I got to do impressions off the top because I forget my act, so... <laughs> it's true, I'll tell you why in a minute, but it's fucking cool. <laughs> Nothing to do with that! <clears throat> but did you see the, the movie Scarface with uh, Al, Al Pacino, you know? Hey, I know my actors, man. Al Pacino, we're in tight. <laughs> but remember when they hung his brother out of the helicopter and he had to deal with the, the Peruvian drug dealer? Remember him? His name was Mr. Sosa. I don't know the actor's name, but his voice is so amazing. It's like, just penetrates you. It's like, don't ever fuck me, Tony. <laughs> sure don't have to worry, Mr. Sosa. I'll never fuck you, man. <laughs> don't ever fuck me, Tony. <laughs> Look, I get goosebumps of myself, man. <clears throat> and I'm wondering, what if, I don't know the actor's name, but do you think that's his real voice? So I wonder if he's like that at home, you know? Honey, are the kids in? I told them seven o'clock. <clears throat> it's ten after. They're trying to fuck me. <laughs> he must be so paranoid this way. Dad, I'm home. You're late. You're trying to fuck me. <laughs> Don't ever fuck me. <clears throat> Fifty-five years old? Holy snapping arseholes if I getting old. 
Snapping arseholes. I'm from down east, so I can talk like that, eh? Oh, suck me arse, you vile little quiff. They talk so foolish. I'm from Nova Scotia, Muscadama to be exact, where men are men and cousins are nervous. <laughs> my uncle is uh, my dad. <laughs> that makes me my own sister, man. I guess that would explain the water retention and the cramps every 28 days. But people from the East Coast and people from Scarborough... I used to live in Markham and Eglinton, so I know what I'm talking about, eh? They all talk with their eyebrows and their heads. Have you ever noticed that? It's like, how's it going today, eh? You know these people? You've seen them, huh? And Buddy be going, oh, I'm just hanging out tomorrow, eh? And sometimes you get a couple of dips, like... And y'all do it. You're driving in your cars and shit. You don't even talk to each other. You're just driving and you see a buddy you know and you just go... Some kind of code, man. 55, I live in Bancroft, Ontario now. Ooh. From Nova Scotia to Bancroft, what a thrill, eh? <laughs> but you know what you call a pretty girl in my town? A tourist. <laughs> I'm serious, man. We did a, we had a, we raised money for minor hockey, and we had a big gig at comics at the Legion. They asked me to MC a beauty contest at the Legion to raise money from I won. That's how bad it is. I'm 55 years old. I know you don't believe it. I know you're checking me out, going impossible. Check the body on my guy. Hey, we'll eat your heart out. You two can look like this if you don't take care of yourself. <clears throat> 55, falling down. I fell down the other day. Check this out, dude. This was creepy. <clears throat> no, I didn't trip and fall. I just fucking fell. <laughs> you ever done that? Because sometimes when you're walking, right, and, you, and something on the sidewalk, you go, doink, and you go, and you always go, what the fuck? <clears throat> I can walk out of the video store. I fell. I fall down. And I do a roll, because I'm carrying some shit I don't want to get damaged. And I go, whoop, right into the side of this van. And this kid comes running over, man. He had, like, spiked hair and fucking all kinds of fishing lures hanging off him and shit and everything. A <clears throat> couple of trout hanging from his armpits and shit. <clears throat> don't cover up your stud, dude. It's all right. It's cool. <clears throat> and he looks right at me and he goes, you all right, dude? And I went, fucking duck, man. Snipers everywhere. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Because eh? you got to have a sense of humor when you screw up. I know I'm getting old because I spend a lot of time at Walmart now. I'm there to pick up my favorite tunes. <laughs> Which just happened to be in the delete bin. It's not a big deal though. My attitude, buck 99 for ABBA, that's a good deal. Because I'm a dyslexic, no matter which way you read it, still spells ABBA. <clears throat> Apparently another sign of old age is forgetting your shit. You forget stuff. <laughs> the other day I'm tripping around the house doing what I do, and, and then I get to the bottom of the stairs and I stopped and I went away somewhere, because I do that a lot. <laughs> and I don't even leave the earth. <laughs> so I stopped and I went away and when I came back I stood at the bottom of the stairs and I'm going Fuck Was I going up the stairs? Or did I just come down? And that's kind of freaky, you know <clears throat> It's crazy, crazy, crazy and yes, it's, I had a brain aneurysm in January of 2000. I clinically died for nine seconds, but the good Lord spared my life for some crazy reason. And uh, my attitude from here on is, you know, I'm just glad to be above ground. So I'm more mature now because of my experience. And my attitude is, if you like me, great. If you don't, do the opposite of above me. Below me. <laughs> I'm so mature. My doctor thinks I smoke way too much pot. Well, it's better than the shit they give you in the hospital. Holy snap. They gave me a drug called Oxycocet, Percocet. Because I was in the hospital for like 18 days, and then I was in recovery for 18 months. And they fucking... Oh, it's pretty trippy. 
And in the hospital, they got a weird sense of humor, you know, because I lost 27 pounds in 18 days, you know. I had bags hooked up to shit and tubes in my Johnson bar, and that kind of freaked me out. Because it was my brain, not the wrong head, you know. I can still pee, you know. Don't need an owie up all up up. No, fuck. <clears throat> Maybe I can't reach it, but I can still go freely, you know. <laughs> but I lost an inch off my penis, man. <laughs> well, I'm not worried. I can afford it. I don't go as deep, but I'm just as fancy. <laughs> I don't even need a penis. I'm probably the only guy in the world that doesn't need one. I don't. No, I'll lick you till you need stitches. <laughs> I love talking like that because you all just go. <laughs> and some of the women are going. And the guy's are going, I don't know what he's talking about. Because that freaks people out when you say shit like that. It just blows their mind. But there's one woman out there that just went, oh, yeah. That's kind of cool. And I always talk nasty like that because my attitude is if I ain't having sex tonight, ain't nobody else going to either. Because all you guys, when you go home tonight, if you're lucky enough to be with a lady, I, I'm speaking heterosexually only because, fuck. I don't know anything about the rest. <laughs> the other lifestyle? I'm not against it, I just don't understand it. It doesn't matter. I have a life, I don't give a rat's ass what you're doing. <laughs> if you're gay, male or female, it gives a rat's ass, see? Eh? <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go in the back door or the front door as long as you get in the house. <clears throat> That's how simple it is. Pretty simple. <clears throat> and they give you drugs in the hospital, man. They give you this drug. It's called oxycocet. Percocet's what it's really called. If you've never tried it, let me tell you this. Holy snap and diabolical jumped up blue streak and rat Jesus, I'll tell you. If you're having a sluggish morning, pop two of these babies, you'll paint a house. But the side effect from it's constipation. I had an aneurysm. The last drug I need is the one that makes me constipated. You don't need to wake up some morning sitting on the toilet going, ah, <coughs> Oh, no. Not now. I, I got my pants off. I'm on the fucking toilet, man. <coughs> when I was in hot, they gave me, um, I really like this drug, Demerol. Oh, you ever had Demerol? Oh, you can poo any time you like. But I didn't like morphine. Morphine's really fucked up. Oh, I'm hooked up to machines and shit. My head's going last party. Body goes, can't help you, dickhead. I'm a little fucking dried up right now. <clears throat> Did a test on me called an angiogram. Because they want to know where you're bleeding from and all that shit. So they stick a fiber optic tube in your brain inject some dye in your brain, all turns black, except where the holes are and you're bleeding from, that stays white. So I thought, okay, cool, fiber optic tube, brain, little hole in the back of my head. Nope. Down here. Wrong head, dickhead. <clears throat> Apparently there's a vein that runs directly from your groin to your brain. Well, we knew that in men anyway. But, <clears throat> but it's true, they stick this tube in, you get all fuzzy, then they tell you to hold your breath, they squirt some shit in, and you see all kinds of pastels. Then I was at Woodstock, and me and Hendrix were jamming like a motherfucker, boy. And I don't remember the rest. And my sex life went down the chute. Holy snapping arseholes, did that ever fly away? Well, you're laid up for 18 months, you're just glad to be above ground. You don't care about sex. Well, I had a sex life, sure I did. It was like euchre. You know, if I had a good hand, I just went alone. When you play the game Euchre, you'll understand. <coughs> I was beating my dick like it stole a joke from me. <coughs> and your friends are the worst. Whenever something happens and you have to go into recovery and you have got a long way to come back, your friends always overcompensate. They always try to be too good to you to help you back. My one friend gave me a, because he, you know, I don't tell him I'm you know, because 
it's embarrassing enough when I'm doing it and I catch myself in the mirror and I go, oh, uh, no, that don't look good. Because <laughs> guys, we do that, eh? we catch ourselves sometimes, oh, a mirror, oh, you know, of course women, when they, when they catch themselves, they go, oh, <laughs> I'm assuming. So my friend brings, he's a pharmacist, he brings me over Viagra. You ever seen this shit? It's about this big, little triangle, 17 bucks a pop. This stuff will make you harder than Japanese arithmetic. <laughs> it will turn skin into mahogany. Cause you'll be grabbing the lemon pledge going, I'm polishing that antique boy. You could walk through a parking lot of pit bulls and they'd be chomping on you going, Kunk! and they'd be breaking all their fucking teeth on that puppy. Dogs be walking around going, <laughs> This shit is crazy. Because there's not a woman. And this stuff will make you that, like that. I mean, you, Johnson Bar, be so big, you go, you know, I should put an off-ramp on that. And it keeps you erect for two and a half hours. Have I got your attention yet? There's not, I don't care how weird or kinky you are, or what fantasies you have, ladies, but two and a half hours with that? No way. I don't give a shit. There's not a woman in this room that needs that for two and a half hours. Well, from experience, after 90 minutes, you girls are video to get you're going, something's smoking, it's burning. Oh, fuck, it's me! <laughs> oh, the hot dogs and the marshmallows, that's very funny, asshole. An amazing side effect, too. Every drug has a side effect. What's the side effect? Did anybody know? Oh, by the way, never take the shit alone. <laughs> you know, man, you'd be walking around going, any birds want to land for a while? <clears throat> the side effect from, believe it or not, Viagra is insomnia. You can't sleep. It's impossible. <laughs> well, yeah, you got such a huge erection, you don't have enough fucking skin left to close your eyes. You're like... You can picture that if you want to, you know. It's just too weird, man. <clears throat> Usually at this point in my show, I like to pull out a cigarette and light it up, but holy fuck, I'd clear the building if I did that. Can't smoke. There's so much hypocrisy involved with smoking. Yeah, if they just want to get rid of it, if you want us to quit, make it illegal. Like, don't sell the shit, you know? Anybody got a package of smokes? I want to show you something just for fun, because I can't remember what I'm talking about, so I might as well go off on a riff. No, man, none of us smoke. We live in Toronto where the air is beautiful. <laughs> you small town people with your fresh water and fresh air. Oh, <clears throat> Cool. Let me show you something. Just don't poison us. Yeah, well, get the fuck away from me when I'm smoking, then. <clears throat> Let me show you the hypocrisy involved. Hi. I'm matinee extra mild. I'm a legal product that's illegal to smoke in nine out of ten places. And I have been medically proven to kill you. <laughs> now we're gonna go to the other side of the theater, my favorite side. will hear us. <laughs> I'm, uh, oh, fuck. oh yeah, I'm marijuana. I'm an illegal product that's illegal to smoke in 10 out of 10 places. <sighs> but I've been medically proven to help you. People that smoke pot, they talk so weird, don't they? Yeah, they go, ear. <laughs> no. Elmo, ear. <clears throat> I used to.
used to have a house on the lake, and uh, and I heated my house with wood. I was one of these old hippies with no hair, you know, living out in peace and solitude by the water with a dog and doing everything organically and all that shit. And after my aneurysm, I couldn't do what I normally would do because, you know, I'm not the guy I used to be. So I moved into town. Now, town is cool because I hadn't lived in a town for like seven years. My friend the pharmacist comes over and thinks it'd be a great idea if we smoked pot and answered the door on Halloween night. <laughs> so I don't know how much to buy. He goes, oh, buy five or six bags. Sounds like it's going to go to waste. Because <laughs> I hadn't smoked pot. Seriously, I hadn't smoked pot for like 30 minutes, right? So some of you are sitting there going, he's 55. He's talking about smoking pot. What freedom? <laughs> So anyway, we go to my house, you act like a kid, because I thought it'd be a trip, you know, I haven't had Halloween for a while. We get down to my basement like two kids, and we're down there like, <laughs> <laughs> and you can get to that point where you go, you know, I am so high right now, <clears throat> I hope those fucking kids don't come to the door, bing bong, oh fuck. Because my brain's filed intellectual bankruptcy. I'm operating on three cells, and I've got to answer a door. <sighs> so I run up. I'm so excited, right? I run up. I'm higher than the Georgia pine. I open the door. Of course, the smoke goes, Ooh. And the kid goes, whoa. <laughs> I said, as you can smell, you've caught me at a bad time. Because I'm stoned, so I'm saying stupid shit, right? And he goes, trick or treat. Well, the stone part of me went, trick. And then he says to me, oh, no, you don't. He says, I know who you are. So now I'm paranoid. I'm going, oh, fuck, you do? <laughs> he goes, you're the comedian guy. I went, Whew. He says, I guess I have to tell you a joke. Now, check this out. The kids are 11 and 9. So if you have kids that are 11, buckle up, because this is what they're talking about. Kid says, how much candy do I get? Well, I got like four little baskets full of candy. I said, I'll give you a whole handful. Check the joke out. 11 years old. <clears throat> he says to me, why don't witches wear panties? <laughs> I don't know. So they can get a better grip on the broom. <laughs> 11. <clears throat> so the stone part of me is going, I'm just howling, right? Meanwhile, the parts on Demerol's going, oh, you're going to get in a lot of trouble right now. And by the way, I need more. If you don't give me thumb, you'll never speak another second. <clears throat> His brother's nine years old, so I give the kid a handful of candy. His brother's nine years old. He goes, if I tell you a joke, do I get some too? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, if you make it better than his joke, I'll give you two handfuls. And his joke was, his joke was better. He says to me, you ever see an asshole wrapped in plastic? said, no. He goes, check out your driver's license, dude. <laughs> Freaking foolishness, eh? <clears throat> oh, man, I don't think I need a coffee or something. I need... <clears throat> Can I, uh... I got a little phlegm in my throat. <laughs> <clears> throat> Can I get uh, some water, like, or something with no ice? Anybody somewhere? Yeah, just because I don't want to freeze my lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I got people running around in my head going, let me out, let me out. <laughs> oh. How spooky is that, eh? <laughs> what? Oh, thanks, man. Beauty. Vida, you're trying to fuck me. You give me Vita, Steve. I just love that. Oh, I'd freak out, man, if we went out and there was no buildings there. Oh, but how trippy would that be, huh? Geez, I'll never make her to Young and Finch now, boy. Have to walk, eh? <laughs> I swear to God, I'm on crack sometimes. Not real. It's not really. Fuck. Where was I? Does it matter, my son? No, no, it doesn't matter, does it? Okay. <laughs> this morning I saw a black guy and two beige guys standing like right there. 
It's weird, because every time I perform, they're right behind me, man. And it's too weird, because sometimes when I walk out like this, they come off the wall and walk beside me. And later on tonight, when I go out and I walk under a street light, they're right there. But he's only one, and he moves right up beside me. No matter how hard you try, you try and walk, it fucking passes you. Okay, so it's not just me then. Good. I'm freaking out now. I was done in the other, I was wondering the other day, if you choke a Smurf, what color do you think they turn? I was curious. What if a synchronized swimmer drowns? Do the rest have to? Who puts the thin ice signs on thin ice? These are things I need to know. <clears throat> Be careful what you ask for, because you just might get it. Remember people say that? You be careful what you ask for, young fella. You just may get her. <laughs> I love challenges in life. But I've had enough. Thank you. Had an aneurysm. I survived that. That was okay. But when I was a kid, I was born a dyslexic. Anyone here dyslexic, by the way? No, Wayne. We all read normally. <laughs> Dyslexia is people who see the written and printed word in reverse. So as a kid, other kids would pick on me, you know, because kids can be vicious sometimes. This, the only way I could deal with it is because I see the written and printed word in reverse. The only way to deal with it was to say it in reverse to them, and then it freaked them out. Holy shit, he, he sounded like Satan. <laughs> Check behind his ear. See if he's got three sixes. Holy shit, he doesn't have three sixes. He's got two sixes and a four. He ain't the devil, but he lives next door. I put it all in a magic marker just to fucking freak them out, eh? Because your parents, they always try to encourage you all the time. My dad, eh? he'd say, oh, don't worry about it when you grow up, eh? You can become a weatherman. And the only job I could get was painting the front of ambulances. Oh, you've seen my work. Good. Because I always like to take a negative and turn it into a positive. So as a dyslexic, I thought, I'm seeing this shit in reverse. Ow, hey! Don't, don't fuck with me now. You're trying to fuck me. Got the world's biggest roach clear my door to have a big fat to put in there. Like, look at that. <laughs> now you stand still. I hate working with Allie McBeal. She never fucking... <laughs> So, I'm going to show you how to deal with a negative and turn it into a positive. To blow the other kid's mind, not only did I see it in reverse, I used to say it in reverse. I would talk backwards or I'd bop tackwards. You won't buck and flee, but huck and fat with the way I like tuck and fell you. <coughs> no, it's too muck and fudge. So what I want to do is tell you a little terry fail, or fairy tale, about a beautiful girl, beautiful girl named Cinderella or Rindricella. Now, I'm going to start by saying, Runts upon a time in a corn country lived a prancing hints and a cancy fassel who wanted to throw a fancy fall. <clears throat> so he invited all the reeple from piles around. That included Rinda Seller, a mugly other, and her three sad blisters. <laughs> Two of which were real uck and fugly. Show knit, I'm talking felling you. One of them was so uck and fugly, had this great big walking forward in her knuck and foes. Her face would mag a gag it. Well, so psycho led to getting all dressed to go to the fancy fall, Saul of a Udden. Rindersella's mug, the other said to Rindersella, you're got knowing. She said, oh, yuck foo, I am. <clears throat> she said, you're knuckin' fought. And they got too much walking fur to do around the huckin' faust and a bet gizzy. Render Sellis at your crock and phasey. I duck and fun it this morning. She said, You duck and fiddent. Look under the tuck and fable. Look at all that duck and fust. Render Sella looked one took, said, Smoly hunk. You're a rock and fight him, suck a four, you'll duck and foo, it won't dirty. They left her all at home, sire Belf. Now there's only one crock and problem. 
What they didn't knock it for was Rinder Sella and a Geary Fod Mother. <laughs> Who had a wagic mind. And you won't bucket believe what Huckin' happens next. <clears throat> Rinder Sells at home, she's fleeping the swore like crock and phasing. Saul of a Udden from the runner of the comb. Rinder Sella look one took. Who the hock are you? Smoly, hope do you ever look stuck in foofed. You got a crook and found, a drancy fist, and a wedgie mon. Foo the hock are you? I'm your Gary Fondmother. And I heard you want to go to the Bancy Fall to meet the Prince of Hints and the Cansey Fassel. She said, You're rockin' fight a duckin' foo. But Father Huck and I got can fall wearing these rockin' fags. <laughs> Gary Fondmother say pro noblem. My possession, beautiful burl, I have a wagic mond. All I have to duck and foo is walk and pave it at your rockin' fags, I'll turn it into a drancy fest. <coughs> Rinder Sella say, you're on drunken fugs. <laughs> she said, no, walk and fay, you walk and fotch. Smoly, hoax, she duck and fought it. Turn those rockin' fags into a drancy fest, Rinder Sella say, too muck and fudge. How did you duck and foo that? She said, never mind, never mind. Rinder Sella said, well, can I got and foam in a real hock and furry? She said, hock and fold it. <laughs> Beautiful burl, how can you be so stuck and foofered? Look, one took outside. It's raining dats and cogs. You'll get your duck and fest and duck and furdy in the muck and fud. She said, well, do some more of your stagic muff. I'm not even going there, man. Because <laughs> I know you're all waiting for me to up up. She says, bring me over that piney pumpkin. She brought it over, took it on the table. <laughs> Smoly hope duck and fun it again. Turn that piney pumpkin into a can't see foach for intercelacy. Too muck and punch. Can I got the phone now? She said, beautiful girl, how can you be such a cupid stunt? That's the only part I worry about. Unless you're having wild sex with somebody, don't ever say that in front of a woman or you're gonna die. She said, beautiful girl, you're gonna be a lot of truck and bubble if you don't luck and fist into me. <clears throat> See the walk on the call? Check the next line out. <clears throat> if the mock struck clid night. <laughs> yeah, me too. <clears throat> if the mock struck clid night, the whole pluck and face is gonna go crook and face and I guarantee you that's the one you can't see supposed to be a plenty of gun, so when you drench your vessel, turn to rock and fags. <clears throat> Yank food. She says, won't dury, I'll remember. Now to make a stone 